Hello, I'm Paul, and today we're going to be talking about stencil effects in Photoshop. And if you want to turn something like this into something like this, stick around. If you like the video, you know what to do. Anyway, let's get started. Uh, just to be clear, it's not going to be take your picture, turn up the threshold, and throw it on a brick wall. That's wrong. See, I actually make stencils in real life and I paint them on canvas and I sell them on Etsy. I'll put the link to my shop below if you want to see. But I kind of know a little bit about how to make stencils that look convincing in Photoshop and not cheap. So anyway, let's get started. Go to Pexels.com and it's a great resource for some photos. I'm going to use a photo of a brick wall uh, to set our artwork on. And um, Let's see. Oh, here you go. This brick wall is great because it's already got some paint on there and some nice texture. It looks good. Download it and uh, once it's done you can drag that image right into Photoshop and once you're there you're going to create a new image. This is going to be the canvas for our subject. File new. It's going to be a 3000 by 3000 pixel 72 dpi RGB color and make sure your background is white. Once you're all good hit OK. Now we're going to need our subject. Um, if you follow me on the gram, when I'm not posting artwork, I post pictures or videos of my dog, but he has his own account right here. My girlfriend does an awesome job of running this and oh man, this is a good boy right here. Let's see, uh, oh, this one, that's a real good boy. So I'm going to screenshot command shift four, drag my selection. And there we go. Drag that screenshot into Photoshop. You can get your pictures however you want. This is just how I'm doing it. Now let's select our subject. And I'll zoom in so you can see the little marching ants. There you go. This did a pretty good job. You can select your image however you want. Um, and it doesn't need to be perfect. Now with our layers panel open, we're going to click new mask and there we go. Next, we're going to take a solid color adjustment layer, make it white and we're going to command left bracket to send it behind our art. And now with our subject selected, layer one here, double click to open up the layer style panel and set a stroke to the center. And in this case, I'm doing 13 pixels, whatever looks good. That looks good to me. Now we're going to take both these layers, right click, convert to smart object, and we're going to drag that smart object into our untitled document. Center him and we're going to Command T to transform, scale it up, and return to lock it in. Awesome. So we're going to go over to the filter, camera raw filter, and what I'm going for here is I want to bring up some of the clarity and a little bit of the exposure. Um, I'm going to Try to get some of these midtones more pronounced by bringing down the highlights, bringing up the shadows, bringing down the whites, and bringing up the blacks. And if, because I'm going to turn this thing black and white, and I find it's better to start in the midtone gray area, because then I have more control over what I bring up later. So, let's see what we need to do next. Oh, okay, here we go. We're going to do a surface blur. And this is going to help smooth out some of the craziness in the fur in this image. Um, you don't want to go crazy. We don't need to blur everything. We want to keep the details like his eyes and his nose intact. Uh, little signs on his bandana, but we want to kind of smooth out a little bit of that fur. This is looking pretty good. Yeah, that's about right. This works for me. Your settings may be different, and you may not even need to do this part. Anyway, next we're going to go back to the camera raw filter. And at this point, we're going to bump that clarity again. And we're going to turn that exposure up. And we're going to start focusing on creating a little bit more contrast here by doing things the normal way, not the counterintuitive way. And by normal, I mean, you know, making the highlights bright and making the shadows and dark parts dark. Um, 
Again, your settings will differ a little bit, but you know, you do want something that is closer to stark black and white. B. Hayes does a pretty good job of helping to uh, figure out what those mid-tone grays are gonna do. I like this. Don't worry, we're gonna do something similar again. We're gonna get even more contrasty as we go. Next though, we're gonna go into the stylize option under filters and open oil paint. And this is gonna help kind of create a little bit more of a hand done look and smooth out some of the more digital lines. Um, stylization and cleanliness are all you're really gonna mess with here. Uh, scale and bristle detail don't do anything unless you have the lighting on. And for what we're doing, if you have the lighting on, things get uh, weird. So you don't need to worry about those two. Worry about the top two. And again, you may choose to use this or not. At this point, we'll go back into our camera raw filter and we're gonna keep on refining and getting closer to something that is pure black and pure white. That's looking pretty good. Hit OK. We're almost there. We're going to go into the filter gallery here and we're going to mess with something called the water vapor filter. If you don't see anything, make sure your effects are turned on and visible like that. Now what's happening here is the fiber length is creating bleed and as you turn it up, the fibers get longer and cause the colors to bleed more. Um, and that's going to help us kind of fill in some of the smaller gaps in the artwork. You know, there are a lot of little black and white lines at this point. Um, but the fibers will help us blend them together, almost like a blur, um, but kind of keeps things, you know, jagged. I just find this more effective than just a blur by itself. Once you're happy, hit OK. That's looking pretty contrasted. We're gonna mess around with a filter called Minimum here. And what that's going to do is going to bleed the black out. It's going to say the minimum area that a black pixel will spread to. Um, and I'm going to say three pixels for that. There's a maximum and it does the opposite of that. Um, but this works for us. We'll go back into oil paint and we're going to smooth out some of this roundness that's going on here. And now at this point, we're gonna mess with our curves. You can use threshold here, but I like curves because it doesn't give you as jagged of an edge as threshold does. Plus I'm just more comfortable in curves, so. Personal preference. This is looking like a stencil now. So now we're gonna create a new layer and we're gonna switch over to a white brush and we're going to set the settings of that brush so we have the hard disk turned all the way up and I'm using the left bracket to adjust the size of the brush to make it smaller. Now if this were an actual stencil it would just be a silhouette everything would fall out so you need to cut the, the stroke on the outside so that if it were an actual stencil it would stay together. So I'm looking for opportune spots, places where things like his paw meets his body or his ear meets the side of his head. Oops, overshot that a little bit. Going to undo. There we go. Now that's looking pretty good. Command zero to zoom out. That looks nice. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my background right click and make a layer from the background. I want this unlocked so I can take all of these layers and convert them into a smart object. Right click and convert to smart object. Now, if I use the magic wand, select the white and then I command shift I to invert my selection. And then I go over to the adjustments layer and do a new solid color layer. I'm gonna pick red uh, for my solid color just so you can see the contrast here. And I'm going to set this to multiply just so you can see what's going on here. 
basically, if this were a real stencil, the red shows you what parts would fall out. You know, the yin yang would not stay in place. Um, that little spot by his nose there, that would fall out. And uh, a good way to fix this is to create a new layer, use the white brush, and kind of just cut holes in those spots. Uh, so I'm looking at the yin yang right here. I'm cutting up the yin yang so it kind of still looks like a yin yang, but hopefully it would stay together if it were real. There we go. We're gonna do that last one down here on the left, and then we're gonna do this one on the right. Fix that little patch of fur on the side of the bandana, cut that. And you can get as detailed with this as you want. Now I'm gonna Command A and Command C to copy the artwork on layer three. Double click on my smart object and not paste with Command V. I'm gonna Command Shift Paste to paste in place. And it's gonna put our little white lines on top of our art. Now if I Command S to save it, it'll update in our new document. And we're going to basically repeat the process. Select our magic wand tool, select the white area, command shift I to invert the selection. And then we're going to, once again, go to our adjustment layer, pick solid color. And just to avoid confusion, let's pick a different color this time. I'm going to go with blue. And now you can see the yin yangs have been preserved. Um, this would actually work as a stencil. And, you know, if I do the multiply, you can see that I did leave some areas, but they were not integral to the readability of the piece. So I'm leaving it alone. It looks pretty good to me. This looks like a stencil. Um, at this point, if you want to make some edits, there's another way to do it. If you option click on your mask, the white is going to be stuff that comes through. And I want to like sharpen up his nose, for example. I'll put a little bit over his eyebrow and, you know, add a few details in manually that I feel like will help readability, like the bandana. I want to define the bandana a little bit more on the side. Um, maybe adjust the wrinkles. And at this point, I'm just painting on the mask. Now, the, switch it to black, and that is going to open up that gap a little bit. And you can do this all day. Um, and the more time you spend with it, and the more time you spend fixing stuff and paying attention to where things would actually go, um, you get a better result. But uh, this looks pretty good for our purposes. So I'm going to turn this blue color into black now. And I'm going to add a, I'm going to turn that off. OK, good. We're going to add a new adjustment layer and do a solid color, make it white, just to keep that behind. And we can turn that background layer off. And we only need these two layers now. We can remove this red one. And layer three was where we had drawn our corrections. We can delete that too. We don't need it anymore. So that's just how we do these, these two layers. I like to keep the, the smart object for fun. But uh, now we're gonna focus on overspray. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to double click on our layer to open the layer side panel, go into the outer glow effect, and we're going to choose our blending mode to dissolve. I have the opacity set around 35, and I'm going to make the color black. And as I spread the size out, you can kind of see it creates some misting. And uh, that's something you would see a little bit of in spray painting. Um, and if you want to intensify that a little bit, you could also mess around with the drop shadow. Um, and if you set that to dissolve as well, get a similar effect. And, you know, I don't want to go buck wild here, but I like to set it so it's kind of going down a little bit because gravity and the way the particles would fall. I'm going to hit OK, and that looks like pretty good overspray, but it's too even. And so we're going to rectify that by duplicating our layer. Command J will do that. And on the first layer, we're going to turn the effects off. And on the second layer, we're going to you know, set that second layer inside a group. Close that group up and we're going to apply a mask to that group. And we're going to go back to our brush tool 
and we're gonna make it nice and large and soft something like this and with the black selected we're gonna paint a little black on the mask and what it's doing is this, we're gonna just do it at random to kind of you know have some areas that have a lot of overspray and some that don't have a lot of overspray and that makes things a little more convincing and we're gonna select all of the layers now and convert them into a smart object and now we have one flat object and with that in mind let's go into Gaussian blur and we're gonna do something really subtle like 0.5 pixels and uh, we'll go over to our adjustments curves and I'm just going to turn the white down a little bit. It's going to bleed the black out. And okay, let's zoom in. And you can see you got some overspray in some spots, not in others. Things are getting soft. It's looking pretty good. Now we can take this whole entire thing now, Command J, right click, rasterize it. Now we have one flat image. And we're going to select all, Command A, copy, Command C. And we're going to move over to our brick wall and paste it in. And we're going to choose one of our darker darkening blending modes. Uh, mess around with what works for you. I found that uh, linear burn does a good job. I set the fill to around 70 on it, and that way you can see a little bit of the brick coming through. But there's Bernie. He's on the wall. And if you want to just add one more subtle thing, maybe you can soften it a little bit by doing a little bit of a blur on on this image. But that's it. You've got graffiti on a wall. Here's the before and after. I, I hope you like what you came out with. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching. And uh, if you enjoyed it, you know, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Um, and you can find me at motc.co or on Instagram at paulmotc. Until next time.